inductees, we, uh, we have Arian Martin, who is an older Mecca Studio School leader, photographer, and actress. Welcome to the stage, Arian. Thank you so much. All right, so this is how everything's going to go. Um, each of these uh, lovely professionals are going to be speaking about their endeavors, their craft, um, give some tidbits of advice. We're going to give each of them upwards of 15 minutes each. And then so uh, Katrina will speak for 15 minutes, and they don't have to fill the full 15. And then we'll go right down the line, and then after that, we're going to open up the floor to everyone for a open Q&A session. So ponder some questions, and uh, other than that, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I, I would tell some, I got some jokes here, but I don't know if we have time, but if we have time at the end, I'll tell some film jokes. Uh, so I believe that is everything. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. Katrina, would you like to uh, start us off? or you're going through a contract with your agent, that you fully understand what it is that um, you're signing and that you're agreeing to. Um, it's also a good time maybe to reach out to the counseling offices and do a little networking. Now, they don't want to be bombarded with phone calls, and I understand all that, but you know, drop them a postcard, drop them a nice line, and make sure they're okay with to everybody's out of work. It's just not affecting time here. You know, be special kind to the crew. And um, um, just really, really take this time to embrace um, those things that you could be doing. And I, um, you know, I know that all of you um, are going to do well. Albuquerque is a phenomenal market. And we just keep growing. So don't be discouraged here at this time. Here yourself, build yourself up, remember who you are as an actor, remember your talent and your gift. Take this time maybe to reach out to your agent, see if there's anything that they can make suggestions on that's going to help you with your um, career as being open back up. So that's really about all for me, and um, I want to say thank you, and if there's anything I can ever do for you, you know, you can drop me an email or a text. Thank you. And I'm thank you so much, Katrina. And um, I'd like to uh, add something to what you said earlier about networking. We're actually, uh, my production company, Sofa Peer Productions, I'm not doing a shameless plug, but this is to benefit all filmmakers here. Just because there's a strike doesn't mean we stop doing what we do best. So we actually have a film networking event coming up this Thursday at Fusion. We already have like, um, there's still five days left and there's already, uh, I believe, 100 people registered. Usually for these events, we have about like 250 and 300 people come out. So it's an awesome place. I'll just give an example. If there was uh, a brand new actress to Albuquerque that was like, I really want to get into commercials. And I've worked with uh, one of the ladies that does all the UNM commercials, all the PNM commercials. I did a commercial for her. And I was like, well, then you should meet this lady right here. And instantly they started talking. She's been working with her since. And it's just a really cool opportunity. No matter who we got eight casting agents, we got actresses, filmmakers, just everything. So it's this Thursday at Fusion from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Totally recommend you all be there. There'll be food trucks, uh, cash bar, raffle prices, all that good stuff. And a lot of filmmakers. So that's my shameless plug. Um, I believe we have time for a film joke. Let me see. Uh, let's see. I, I, uh, I didn't write these, I found them online. So. All right, let's see. Um, what would you like? Would you like uh, uh, corny pickup lines? Would you like corny jokes? Um, I'll go with corny jokes. Corny jokes. Okay. Okay. What is a blue whale's favorite James Bond film? I don't know. What is it? License to Krill. Oh. What is a dentist's favorite movie? I don't know. What is it? Plague to the Future. Okay, one more, one more. What is a pizza's favorite movie? Pie hard. Okay, I'm done. All right, uh, next up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, next up. Let's see. We have um, we have background casting director Lori Latham. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lori Latham. Hi. Uh, I just met Katrina Lee today, just a few minutes ago, and I just want to ditto everything she said because I think she pretty much covered um, anything that I was going to say. Um, 
especially the part about uh, keeping your headshots updated. Um, because it's true, we, we see your headshots um, and see it, and I know there are several people who have the same headshot for at least 10 years. And they may look great, but it's always nice to get an updated headshot um, with accurate sizes. Um, and so that's what I'll say. And if you have questions um, after, after we're done, Alright, next up we have casting director Joedna Bolden. Give it up to Joedna Bolden. Hey guys, it's really good to see you. You know, I've missed you since before the, the pandemic kind of thing. So it's th this is my first in-person thing. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of turned out everything until now. I, don't you dare give me COVID. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, you know, I've been doing this a really long time. My first show I cast in, I'm going to show my age here, 1979, a TV series for PBS called Newscast from the Past. And I don't think PBS is part of the AMPTP kind of thing, so I could, I could say something about it. Um, and then my first show in New Mexico. I do features and TV, but my first show in New Mexico was in 1982. And uh, um, that was The Lazarus Man. And you know, things have changed so much since then. It was really hard to find good actors in New Mexico back in 1982. People were so rusty, there wasn't a whole lot of work. And now, oh my God, there are so many actors that are really, really good, you know. Um, I'm real proud of one of our local actors who I think I first cast her when she was like seven or something like that, Amber Midthunder. You guys know Amber yeah. Midthunder? She is doing great now. And I was actually able to cast her as a series regular in a show we were working on that I can't probably say what it is, but that never happens here. What a difference between now and 1982 and how you guys have grown and the talent pool's grown and you compete with, with LA now in a lot, a lot of ways. And a lot of LA actors have moved back now too. So I love actors. I love helping you. I love, you know, at some point someone said I could say I was a fairy godmother. Bing, you get a part, bing, you know, kind of thing, which I really like. I like that image of uh, helping you and be, being a, a, a fairy godmother. Um, some of the people, let's see, there was a little nine-year-old girl that I was doing a search for a show, it was either Disney or, Net, or, uh, or um, uh, I think it was Disney uh, or uh, Nickelodeon, I don't know which one, but anyway, I was doing a search, it was back when I was in Texas, in Austin, Texas, and we were looking for girls, 11-year-old girls, who could play soccer for a series. And there was this little nine-year-old girl who came in from Dallas, and my gosh, she was just so good. I had to send her on with a note saying, I know, she's nine, she's not 11, but you guys have got to look at her. You just have got to look at her. And that little girl's name was Selena Gomez. And you know what? They developed a series for her. And I think she's done pretty well, you know. And then there was another um, Texas actor that, um, I was casting a feature and I was such a big fan of his. And there was a role of a cowboy poet and I really wanted him to get it. And I was doing this casting in San Antonio. He lived in Austin, I lived in Austin. And I think he drove to San Antonio eight times. And the final callbacks, there were, I think, six roles and one of them was cut. I had six people coming back and guess, that my, my, my person did not get it. And that was Matthew McConaughey. Oh, wow. But I was able to cast Renee Zellwacher in that very same project, you know, and I had to talk her into getting a good headshot. <laughs> she was just about ready to go to LA, and she was like, well, it got me Chainsaw Massacre. And it's like, mm-hmm, but you're going to LA, and you're gonna be competing with all, you need, you need to get, and she did, obviously get a new headshot. And what I was really impressed with when she won her first Oscar is she thanked her agent. She thanked her Texas agent. That never happens. 
That just never happens. Never. So, yay, Renee. Um, let's see, somebody else that, um, and it just, I can't tell you what it does to my heart when I see those people at, that, you know, I know I've opened a little door for or helped them walk down a little bit of a path. And the latest one, uh, let's see, I cast him when he was a teenager in something we got to go to the Emmys for. Um, and that is Glenn Powell who's one of the co-stars with Tom Cruise in the new Top Gun movie. So it's like it can happen to any of you guys, you know? I mean, someone has to see you and then, you know, you get recommended and you just have to keep working at it, you know? Don't give up. There were times when I wanted to give up as a casting director because of no work, you know? And I did end up, um, I was telling Ariana, I used to work in, in Texas, and I had started a company called Third Coast Casting, because, you know, East Coast, West Coast, Third Coast, and uh, there was a, a, a division of it that did extras casting, and I had to sell that part of the company before I stopped doing it, because I did extras for a long time, and I loved it. I loved it. It was like painting a picture with people, you know? Uh, it felt very artistic and creative and very hard work. Oh my God, very hard work. I mean, I can remember them calling me at 2 a.m. and on my message machine, it said, you will wake up, we're changing the scene for tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and we don't need punk rockers. Like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's really, really difficult work. But you know, when you're working as an extra, you can learn a lot. I worked as an extra, it was my straight job when I first moved to LA because I didn't want to wait tables. And what I would do is I would pick one department to study each time I worked. Worked a lot for Universal, but we're not talking about them today because they're not signing their deals yet. Um, so there's a lot you can learn about it. And um, also, uh, if, you're, if you can be a stand-in, there's a lot to learn about being on the set and being a stand-in. Um, I got to read lines sometime as a stand-in in rehearsals because my actor had a personal appearance somewhere or something or another. I was Marie Osmond's stand-in and that happened a lot. It was very exciting uh, to be doing lines with Timothy Bottoms. And um, there was a, a, a show that I did and I was not the stand-in, but I was the acting double. So when you're two people in a scene, somebody has to be that other person. And I was Lily Tomlin's acting double for The Incredible Shrinking Woman. And I got upgraded for that because I was saying lines. They were recording me. And anyway, I bought a sports car <laughs> with the residuals from that particular movie. And so you never know in this business when a little door could crack open if you're present and you're really um, uh, trying to learn and open to being to, to learning and just show up. You know, a lot of it is just showing up. Um, I agree with everything Katrina said too. I just want to add, it's also a good time to be working on your demo tape because as we have moved more into virtual, a demo tape can be really, really important to get you even the audition. And this is the time that you provide your agent with everything you can as far as marketing materials and um, so work on your demo tape. Yes, take workshops. Yes, network. But uh, headshot is so very, very important. I'm not changing mine on IMDb. I know it's been airbrushed, but I'm keeping it. You know, I'm not showing my but, but you know, I'm not, I'm not hired on my looks either. So, uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't. Am I out of time? I, I could, I could keep going, and I, I might have some jokes too. But. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I just want you to know, and I think this is true of all casting directors, or at least most of us, we love you. We love actors. That's why we do this, you know, is to be the fairy godmothers, or to be able to help you, or to, to help uh, open those doors for you, and, and you have to walk through it. You have to be prepared and ready to go, and uh, one thing that I really look for when I audition people of course that you're prepared, but that you're having fun. 
you know, we all want to have fun at this. And how privileged are we to work in this industry and have that kind of fun? And I've had directors and producers ask me, we're going on location, who would be the most fun to be with if they're trying to decide between two people or, or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> there was some project we worked on, I think, for WWE, and the director actually said, are they an asshole or not? Because <laughs> there's no assholes on this production. You know, so it, it does matter to have fun. So I think that's about it. I'll be open for questions. All right, great on. Give it up for Joy Nicole. Yeah. Anything I can put it on set, but. Thank you so much. All right, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the owners of Act Up Studios, uh, filmmaker, photographer, and actress, ladies and gentlemen, Ariane Martin. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I got, because I'm nervous. Yeah. 